Okay, hello everyone. This is Brock Beard from LastCar.info. Just coming back from our coverage at Sonoma and then at Texas. On the phone, I have Norm Benning on the radio. Uh, Norm, uh, how's it going? Uh, pretty good now, bro. Truck back. <laughs> Well, I, I know the, the incident at Kansas, uh, you know, is, is something that's still, uh, you know, on, on your mind there. And we were talking a little bit about Pit Road about it. And I figured, you know, we uh, we have, a, well, actually you figured, uh, you invited me to have a conversation with you about it. And so I really, I just want to give you the floor. Uh, you know, tell me, tell me what happened. All right. Went to Kansas City and uh, we dropped our trailer at the racetrack, fortunately, and, um, uh, Drove the dually to the Comfort Suites, seven minutes from the racetrack. It parked at 10.30 at night, has a factory alarm on it and so forth. Uh, I even asked the people at the front desk keep an eye on it because I had so much stuff inside of it. And uh, the lady said, just park it next to her car right in front of the window and everything will be fine. And uh, at uh, 6.45 in the morning, I came down to the lobby and looked out the window. My truck was gone. Went to the front desk told him about it, called the police, police came out, made a report, and uh, I got to the racetrack. Well, back up a little bit, I they put the video on, and it showed uh, at 3.20 in the morning, a uh, white, uh, white uh, SUV backed in there with black tape on the license plate. Guy got out of it, broke my door handle, and somehow disarmed the factory alarm. It never went off. Uh, got in the door, and then smashed the steering wheel. At 3.24, he drove away. So okay, so you you had your truck was stolen. This is the only the only truck you had access to, correct? No, in fact, three of us spent the night in the garage area in the truck garage area because uh, we had no transportation. All the truck series people and so forth left, and uh, we were literally just sitting in the middle of the, the garage area with in a trailer and couldn't leave. Didn't have credentials to get back in on Sunday. I was afraid to go out of there and not be able to get back into my trailer. So we uh, spent the the whole rest of the day after the truck race and Richard Petty came over. I I was very thankful he came over with food, a catered uh, dinner for the three of us, which was really cool and that was it for help. Uh, what about track, uh, track security or track officials there in Kansas? Did anybody come by and was asking like what, you, what you guys were still doing there? No, nobody came in. Uh, there was a, one truck official actually did bring us a, some drinks and a and a pizza. I don't want to forget about that. He he was thinking about us, but that was the extent of it. And then uh, Jerry showed up uh, shortly before the the cup race was over, and uh, they didn't want to let him in the racetrack after I talked to security. He had a heck of a time getting in there to get to my trailer. They told me he had to wait till the race is over. <laughs> That really upset me. So there was a pretty serious lack of communication there through security people and so forth. But it was a long day, and, uh, you know, like I said, the three of us actually slept in the race hauler trailer. Did you have any, you know, bedding or anything in, in the trailer at the time? Like, or, you know, like any, any sleeping bags or anything like that? No, no. Yeah, it was disappointing, to say the least. Uh, be stuck out there. Out there, like I said, uh, I went to the race, you know, I got a ride over to the racetrack and they towed the trailer into the racetrack for me. It was up on the circle and then we, we ran our race and had issues with the ignition and got the thing all loaded up and that was it. That was part where Jerry showed up with, you know, 24 hours later, you know, <laughs> we're sitting in the middle of the parking lot there. And it was a weird situation. That I never had anything stolen before. And uh, to come down into the lobby and see your truck gone was, especially when you have an alarm system and you're right in front of the window. I watched the video and I have the video and it, it took them four minutes to get in that truck and drive it away. I just couldn't believe it all happened. And, the, and uh, you know, it took four days. Uh, there was... We, we had put this on social media. There's actually fans out looking for my truck, and they were spotting, supposedly. Uh, and then uh, four days later, I guess fans that lives, uh, live out there in Kansas City spotted it at some apartment complex, called the police, and the police went and towed it to uh, their pound and called me up and uh, told me it was there and that 
you know, uh, I called the, the pound and asked the guys what kind of shape it was in. They said it was wrecked in the back and fifth wheel was gone, batteries were gone. And uh, I asked how they'd try and start it. They put batteries in and so forth. And they said that somebody had to put gas in it. It's a it's a diesel engine, so oh. uh, it, ruined, it ruined the engine. So I was in communication with my insurance company, and they had it towed to their one of their facilities and then uh, I made arrangements to get the thing towed back to Pittsburgh and now it's here and uh, you know we're still dealing with the insurance company about it but we're going to get it back on the road we got it repaired enough to, it's still not right but we got it you know we changed the engine and all that stuff and it's still got some issues with brakes and just various different things I was able to fix the steering column but the door you know, we didn't get to the door or any of that stuff. The door's got a hole in it where they smashed it. We were able to use it in Texas, but uh, I, was, I wasn't I was able to go to uh, what was uh, before that, Coda, and, and uh, we weren't able to go to Charlotte. That's the thing that confuses me is they didn't steal it for profit because of the engine in, tr- in that truck is worth eight to ten thousand dollars and that's confuses me is they i figured that thing would be in pieces sold in pieces and, and it wasn't i don't know what their reason was for stealing it. yeah it's, i don't know what we can do about it uh you know i uh, i really worry now when i leave my stuff at these motels and we just don't know but you know i was so upset about the whole thing you know kansas city this is uh i'm like the third one to have a haul or stolen uh, Kansas City. I don't know what's going on, but uh, but I'm just glad I got my truck back. Now we got to get it back reliable again and uh, continue to go to the races. I didn't realize when you, you know, when I first heard about this story that, you know, you'd had to spend a couple days waiting for uh, uh, for your friend to bring the, uh, bring the backup truck down there uh, to tow you guys out. I didn't realize that that was still you know, during the race weekend that you had these races going on still with your hauler just sitting by itself in there. I've, um, I, I kind of imagined it being, you know, after, after the race weekend itself with the, you know, press schedule, we certainly have a dedicated, you know, fan base that's, uh, that's followed you. Uh, of course we've talked about Rob Taylor, uh, that's, uh, uh, designed the uh, t-shirts for your crew there. He's still a big, uh, big supporter of yours over in Canada. Um, but, uh, you know, is, is there anything your fans can do to, to help you out or, or anything to make uh, help make this right with your um, uh, with what happened back in Kansas? Well, a lot of fans suggested we start this GoFundMe page to try and get another haul or get this one repaired, as it turned out. I really appreciate some people have, have contributed to, to getting me back on the road, and it's been a huge help. I don't, you know, I, I really had reservations about doing that, but I had so many people telling me I need to do this so we can help you, so so we did it. And it, and it was amazing how many people stepped up to get us back on the road. I, I, I'm sorry to hear that this happened, and, and I hope that it gets, uh, it gets made right real soon here. I mean, obviously you got your truck back but um you know hopefully you're 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 made uh whole on that uh, pretty soon yeah it's, it's amazing to me i don't know what it is it deserves many such a fan base but i, I have over eleven thousand followers and it's just amazing to me well yeah, i hear from fans all the time that they really appreciate them hanging in there and trying to compete with the, the huge you know teams multi-race cars you know uh four or five race teams within one organization it's it's kind of tough to compete against that i just really appreciate the people that cared and helped me and the fans and so forth and uh it was just amazing how many calls were put in the sightings of my truck and to the police and all that stuff it's just cool that uh, to have the support i do have and uh i appreciate all of it well we appreciate you have having you out there and uh you know like like i always say man keep up keep up the fight oh yeah it's uh i can't always be very competitive but i'm there and and uh every once in a while we are and i live for those moments you know, if, if if we could just find ourselves a major sponsor, we could be competitive all the time. But it's it's really tough to do 